You're listening to Lit Out Loud, the podcast wherein we read aloud great works of poetry and prose and offer our thoughts. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Benjamin Carl. In honor of Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, I wanted to find a poem or other short piece that celebrated that courage and bravado that we often think of when we imagine American soldiers of the Second World War. A piece about the glory of battle and all that dolce decora me pro patria muri. It is sweet and fitting to die for one's country, as the poet Horace wrote. And then I thought of my grandfather. In those years, he was a naval signalman and later a chief petty officer assigned to Admiral Spruance in the Pacific Theater. He was at Pearl on the Nevada, which was the only ship to get underway during the attack. Ultimately, they had to beach the Nevada because the Japanese were swarming the slow-moving target in an attempt to sink the vessel in the channel, thus blocking any hope of escape for the rest of the fleet. Talking to my uncle, his son, my grandfather described the scene as, quote, mayhem largely because most of the officers were ashore when the strike took place. He watched a man die on the ladder above him as they climbed off the Nevada to support a hospital nearby. He later fought at Midway, Okinawa, and other battles. He took shrapnel from Zeros, kamikaze nearby on more than one occasion and lived long enough for me to know and admire him when I was a small boy. You see, despite all his experiences in the war, terms like bravado and glory are not what memories of my grandfather conjure. Rather, he was quite quiet, as I remember him. Funny and curious, but with a deep and lingering seriousness behind his eyes that spoke of duty, honor, and stalwart dedication qualities that help one to stand fast and hold their ground even when an enemy plane is crashing into the deck nearby. The men and women, the soldiers and civilians who died at Pearl and in the trenches and the fields and the years of the war to come were just these kinds of people. Not foolhardy or full of bombast, but serious, often quiet, and dedicated soldiers who held their ground, sometimes against impossible odds. It was this sense, this image, that led me to John McRae's The Unconquered Dead. The setting of the poem is somewhat different than that of Pearl. It takes place in a field during World War I, rather than at sea at the outset of World War II. It opens with a fragmented quote as though from a news bulletin or other report, and I'd like to read it to you now. Quote, defeated with great loss, end quote. Not we the conquered, not to us the blame of them that flee, of them that basely yield, nor ours the shout of victory, the fame of them that vanquish in a stricken field. That day of battle in the dusty heat, we lay and heard the bullets swish and sing like scythes amid the over-ripened wheat, and we the harvest of their garnering. Some yielded, no, not we, not we, we swear by these our wounds, this trench upon the hill where all the shell-strewn earth is seamed and bare was ours to keep. And lo, we have it still. We might have yielded, even we, but death came for our helper. Like a sudden flood, the crashing darkness fell. Our painful breath we drew with gasps amid the choking blood. The roar fell faint and farther off, and soon sank to a foolish humming in our ears like crickets in the long, hot afternoon among the wheat fields of the olden years. Before our eyes a boundless wall of red shot through by sudden streaks of jagged pain, then a slow-gathering darkness overhead, and rest came on us like a quiet rain. 
not we the conquered, not to us the shame, who hold our earth and ramparts, nor shall cease to hold them ever. Victors we, who came in that fierce moment to our honored peace. Not we the conquered, the unconquered dead. It begs some interesting questions. Can we be killed and not have lost? Can we do everything right and still not win? I, I imagine there are a lot of people listening who identify with that last bit. It's not fair, we often think when that happens. I did everything right. Don't I deserve X, Y, or Z? Did they lose that died in McRae's peace? No. They held their ground, their earthen ramparts, and, quote, shall not cease to hold them ever, being thus buried there. Did those who died at Pearl lose? Certainly the Japanese attack was extraordinarily successful, even if it didn't completely cripple the Pacific fleet as planned. Yet those men and women who did die that day, nearly two and a half thousand of them, did not lose, because they stood and defended their ground against impossible odds. They are the unconquered dead. And it is at this time each year that we remember them and thank them for their great sacrifice. Until next time, I'm Benjamin Carl, and this has been Lit Out Loud. Thank you.